Hi, I'm Ben Province and welcome to Show Me The Music. On today's show, we'll get to know Sons of Phil. I caught up with frontman James Wilson at Blueberry Hill during a stop on the band's tour. You're weary but carrying on. Don't you march to the beat of a heart that's been Sons of Bill features brothers James, Abe, and Sam Wilson, as well as bass player Seth Green and drummer Todd Wellens. The Virginia Five piece has gained national recognition with the release of its fourth studio album, Love and Logic. The record was produced by founding Wilco drummer Ken Coomer. How did that relationship come about? Well, we, uh, we were kind of in a weird place as a band after the Sirens record came out. Um, we parted ways with our management, we parted ways with our agent, and we were just trying to figure out how we were going to make another record. Um, so we put out a 45 for Record Store Day, mm -hmm. just a two-song single. He heard one of the songs, a friend sent it to him, oh, okay. and he just invited us down to his studio in Nashville. He's like, let's just do a long weekend, you know, let's just record two songs, mm -hmm. see how it goes, see, feel each other out. And it, it ended up being a great relationship and really kind of the inspiration to, to uh, figuring out how to make another record the right way. And right. So right. It's, been, it's been great. And he's given you a lot of encouragement, even comparing it to the way uh, they made those early Wilco records. What does that mean to you to get that kind of feedback? Well, you know, I mean, I, I think, you know, Wilco was one of these bands that, that uh, was always changing from record to record, you know, and always trying to hone in on a sound and, and push themselves creatively, but not like consciously changing, just always trying to hone in on right. something real. And, and I, I feel like we're on the same kind of path, right. um, but there's those growing pains are really hard on a band, and you know the dynamics of multiple front men, you know, and right. multiple songwriters, and uh, how to move, how to negotiate those growing pains is a can be a difficult process. And we Ken had been through it in Wilco, so he helped us right. do it. We tried to make uh, Love and Logic on our own, self-produce it right. for a couple weeks in back in Virginia, and it was. Uh, really hard. So having Ken there to just help negotiate a way for us to grow, and because it's a big change for us from Sirens in a lot of ways. So, right. But it's I, I feel like we've arrived at somewhere we all are happy with, and comfortable in our skin. When the faces grow dim with the lights, and all the old melodies holding you tight. You know, with this one, it was just, you know, we didn't have a label breathing down our neck, we didn't have a manager sure. breathing down our neck telling us about that we need radio, telling us that we, you know, we need to fit into a, uh, a, a mold or some sort of marketable demographic. Ken was just like, let's just go in and take these songs one by one and make something that we all love. And that was, a, that was, a, that was what we needed to do um, to make the record. So, you know, it, it's very different. and. Um, some people are going to get it, some people aren't, and that's okay. And he kind of gave us the confidence, having seen it through, you know, been in a band that did that and produced records for bands mm -hmm. that to, to help us see it through. So it's just a, it's just kind of a, it's, I'd say it's just much more of a fearless record and where okay. Sirens was a very fearful record. But I want to talk about the band name. There's no secret code to it. You, uh, you and your two brothers are really sons of Bill. And um, why was it so important to name the band after your father? You know, uh, when we named the band, we hadn't thought about it too much. You know, it was actually, we got named by one of my dad's students at an open mic night. Oh, really? You know, my brother Abe and I were just playing an open mic night, and someone asked what we were called, and it got shouted out, and we just kind of stuck, you know, because we just, you know, it was very uh, kind of unconscious. But it was just, you know, at the time we started, um, you know, my brother was uh, playing jazz and indie rock up in New York, and I was out west uh, in school, and Abe was in architecture school, and we were all finding ourselves kind of disillusioned with our musical projects and back in Virginia. And, you know, and, and just that common bond we have of, uh, you know, my, my dad, you know, we make music very different from what my dad played, obviously, growing up, but there was a, there's a foundation there that uh, kind of brought us back to, uh, the roots of what made us fall in love with music in the first place and fall in love with writing, you know, because right. all three of us write, all three of us sing on the record, so it's, sure. um, that, that was kind of the, you know, 
my dad kind of started that for us. And he's not just a musician, but a professor of theology. You kind of talked about how he's influenced your music. How has he in, in, influenced your theology? You know, there's just, part of being an artist is always constantly trying to, uh, in some way, always kind of constantly trying to hone in on what's true, mm -hmm. um, very broadly speaking. And I think uh, theology at its best is grappling with those same questions, those same unanswerable questions, things that you can't just uh, settle in on and, you know, st strike it done and move on. And so you, you know, you, you, you know, life should be that constant search. And, uh, you know, I felt that, you know, my dad relates to what we're doing, you know, the same kind of uh, uh, struggles that we're going through and part of the search and the journey is what he did in his field. and. Mm -hmm. It's. I think we're certainly doing the same thing. We just do it in a with a trailer and a bunch of rock gear and <laughs> right. a lot of late nights. So it's right. But I know you believe that music matters. Music's important, and um, it's important to be honest and important to be transparent. Um, you've kind of taught. Uh, when I was doing my research, I, I learned that it's easier to be honest when you're singing with uh, family. Um, can you talk about that a little bit? Yeah, I mean, I just think it's a, you know, I mean, rock and roll is just a, it's a weird business, you know, I mean, because it's, you, you have your art on the one hand, right. which you're going to do whether or not you're touring or not, you're, you're, you're an artist, you're going to make your art, but if you want to make, try to make your living at it, I mean, it's being in the music industry and subject all sorts of posturing and fads and mass psychology and things that have nothing to do with making art, you know, right. it's, a, it's a very strange thing. So I think for us, you know, it's why, you know, it's why like just how to um, not get swept away by all the posturing and the fads because it's just, you know, you can make faddish and consequential music that's forgotten, but that's not sure. why we do it, and that's not why we want to be in a band and um, make records together. So it's why, you know, you keep, like, country music close to you, because it's just like, you know, even though, you know, it's Love and Logic is a far cry from a country record, it's, it keeps you focusing on what, on what matters, you know. Can you sing? Do you have something right. to say? What were some of your influences going into the album? Because I, I hear I hear a hodgepodge of, of, of different different influences. Man, we let it be a hodgepodge. You know, That's great. like we just you know we just wanted to make mu music that we love, and so all the brothers are into very different stuff. You right. know, I mean, uh, and we just let it be that. You know, I mean, I, I guess in certain ways we let the British influences out that. more. Um, you know, Abe is really influenced by the Beatles and Pink Floyd, but we had never really. I would never let him express that on a record. Okay. And I let go and just let him, you know, it's okay, you know, that it's not just Americana. Like, let that out, right. or, you know. Right. I love, like, a lot of new wave stuff. Like, I've been a huge sure. Cure fan since I'm a little kid, yeah. and I really let that out on a record, you know. And, sure. and it was just, you know, we love music, love making music together, and we just decided to just let it go and let all those influences out. Um, and the album, again, Love and Logic, where can people go pick it up? Um, you know, it's in record stores, awesome. um, you know, and it's on Amazon and on the website and iTunes. You can, it's on Spotify. Very you know, good. Spotify sounds terrible. Somebody has to say it. But. <laughs> <laughs> uh, where can people go? Follow you online, Facebook, yeah, website? Well, Facebook, it. Instagram. We've got a smartphone now. Um, awesome. Yeah, it took me a while to get one. Yeah, I know, me too. <laughs> uh, Twitter and all that stuff. But awesome. We're, we're there. Well, everybody, go follow Sons of Bill. For James, my name is Ben, and you're watching Show Me the Music. Fixing your eyes on the distant horizon and waiting for dawn. And that sun will shine on. Well, what a fun show. I want to give a big thank you to James Wilson for taking some time out and talking with us, and also to Blueberry Hill for being so accommodating. Well, that'll do it for our show. My name is Ben Province, and as always, I'm asking you to show me the music.